In this video, we're going to look at finding values given probabilities. We're told the random variable x follows a normal distribution with mean 20 and variance 12. We need to find the value of a and the value of b such that the probability of x being less than a is 0.4, the probability of x being greater than b is 0.6915, and then we need to write down the probability that x is between b and a. So let's consider our values here. We have a mean which we label mu. Mu in this particular case is 20. We want to find the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of variance. So this is now going to give me sigma, and that's going to be equal to root 12. If that means nothing to you, please do check out the videos prior to this. We need to convert this into the standard normal. So I'm going to let z be equal to, and in this particular case, x minus mu divided by sigma, or if you like, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All I'm going to do is plug these straight in. So let's deal with this one. The probability of x being less than a is 0 0.4. So I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to say now the probability that z is going to be less than a minus 20 divided by root 12 will be equal to 0 0.4. So let's have a graphical representation of this, a quick sketch, and what we'll have is something looking like so. So we'll have now, and the area trapped under the curve to the left of this line is now going to be 0 0.4. What we need to do is find a value from one of our tables. Which table is now up to us? And the way I like to think about this is as follows. Here is our standard normal curve, and I'm looking at it from the other side. So I've gone around the other side. I've got some line, and I'm being told the area trapped under the curve in this particular case is going to be 0 0.4, and that's going to be this area right here. We know our percentage points table will give us a value corresponding to 0 0.4. So let's go and look at that. The only difference being is that this is going to be the negative equivalent. So let's go and look in our percentage points table. And we're after 0 0.4. So here we are, 0 0.4. So what we can now say then is the value that we're after is negative 0 0.2533. So if you want, you can put down here, you can state that at this point now, z will be equal to negative 0 0.2533. So let's write this here. Instead of writing all of this, what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have a minus 20 divided by the square root of 12 will be equal to negative 0 0.2533. So all we need to do is solve for a. So multiply both sides by root 12 and add to 20, and that will now give us a. So 20 minus, and then we'll have root 12 multiplied by 0 0.2533. So let's push up for the calculator and get a value. So 20 minus now, and we will have on here root 12. So let's put this in, root 12, and then multiplied now by uh, 0.2533. And we end up now with 19.122 and so on. So A is going to be equal to 19.12. That's correct to two decimal places. If you want to give your answer to three significant figures, which is more likely in the exam, 19.1. Okay, let's deal with the next one. So we're told now the probability of x being greater than b is 0.6915. So let's jump in and make the substitution. Probability that z is going to be greater than b minus 20 over root 12 will be equal to 0 0.6915. So let's consider a quick sketch, and what we'll have is something looking like so. So we'll have some line, and we'll place it just here. Let's draw that down. That looks pretty good. And we're interested now in the area trapped under the curve to the right of this line. Yet again, I'm going to think about going around the back of the curve. So what we're going to see, and you don't have to use this method, we're going to have now a standard normal. We're going to now have something looking like so. We're going to have some positive value here, and the area trapped under the curve to the left of this line is going to be given as 0 0.6915. That's our area. We can simply go to our standard normal table and find the corresponding value and just make it negative. So let's go and look at that. Let's go to the standard normal table. So we want 6915. 6915, there we go, just there. 
Therefore, I can now pick up this value and take the negative equivalent. So I can now say, let's put this on, at this point here, z is going to be equal to uh, negative 0 0.5. So instead of writing this, I can now write b minus 20 divided by the root of 12 will be equal now to negative 0 0.5. So yet again, solving for b, b will be equal to 20 minus, and then we'll have the root 12 multiplied by 0 0.5. And all I'll do is push this through a calculator. And that will now give us the value of b. So let's grab calculator. So all we've got to do now is exactly the same as this, and we can just switch this over now to 0.5. So let's push that through there. And we end up now with 18.267 and so on. So I'm going to say B is going to be 18.27. That is correct to two decimal places. If you want to give it to three significant figures, which again is more likely 18.3. So there we go. All done and dusted. We now need to write down the probability that X is between B and A. Let's just think what we've got here. And I'm just going to draw a little sketch. We found A, and let's put A on here. This is going to be the line A. And remember, these don't have to be hugely accurate. And this is going to be B. We're interested in the area trapped between these two. So what we'll do is just look at this. So what we're going to have is this right here. In the first part of the question, we found A. And then in the second part of the question, we found B. This area can be simply found by doing this area, 0.4 minus 1 minus for 0 0.6915, because that's going to be that little bit there. 1 minus 0 0.6915 is going to be this bit. So I can write this now as follows. I can write this as 0 0.4. That is the area trapped under the curve to the left of A. And simply subtract away now uh, 1 minus 0 0.6915. So all I'm going to do is just force that for a calculator and we will get our answer. So here it is, 0.4 minus 1 minus 0.6915. Um, and what are we going to wind up with now? That's going to give me now 0 0.0915. So 0 0.0915. So that's a value right there. And that's one way of looking at it. Plenty of different ways you could. Um, but hopefully that's given you some idea on how to tackle those questions. You've just got to make now the decision which table is relevant to these. After a while, it should become fairly logical.